Before we get to the video, a quick question. Have you checked out DapRadar's portfolio tracker? Just go to dapradar.com and hit the portfolio button. And then this works for any Ethereum or any Binance Smart Chain wallet. Just paste in the address and open the wallet. So this works as an interface to what this wallet has been interacting with. So uh, you can check out the assets, the tokens that are in this wallet at the moment, any NFTs. You can even check out the DeFi. So this wallet has been interacting with SushiSwap, Aave and Compound, has some savings in there, but doesn't have any loans out. You can even see all the dApps that this wallet has interacted with over its history. And there's some nice touches. You can check out the amount of gas has been spent as well. So it's a really nice interface to see what's going on in your wallet or any wallet on the Ethereum or Binance smart chain. Hello and welcome to DAP Radar, your most trusted source for DAP data. So in this video, we're just having a look at the news that the NIA blockchain has announced that its rainbow bridge uh, to Ethereum is now live. So we're starting to see a lot of blockchains, these new blockchains, uh, now kind of launching these what we call bridge uh, uh, kind of opportunities. And basically all, all of bridges is a sort of a, a way of transferring uh, tokens across chains. So it's obviously a little bit more complicated than that. Basically what you're doing is you're having a smart contract that that uh, you send a token to. So on this in this case we'd be sending some Ethereum token or an Ethereum token to the to the bridge and it basically will uh, sort of lock that token in or potentially destroy that token. But then on the other side of the bridge it will remint that the a version of that token on the near blockchain. So you have the ability to now start sending tokens um, across different blockchains which is uh, sort of very valuable for these new blockchains, particularly because there's so much value locked into Ethereum. But at the moment, gas prices on Ethereum are, Ethereum are very expensive. So it's very hard to, so it's very expensive to do anything. So it kind of makes sense that some people might want to take some of their value on Ethereum, pay, granted they have to pay one big gas fee, <laughs> but then they'll get it off Ethereum and then they'll get it onto the new blockchain and then they can do maybe some of the things, uh, particularly in DeFi, that they would find otherwise um, uh, too expensive to do on Ethereum. At least that's the that's the concept. So let's let's have a quick kind of go through this um, announcement and then have have a look and see what it looks like. So um, you know these new blockchains like Nia um, are are higher throughput, kind of lower fees, shorter confirmation times. So Ethereum's obviously moving towards that sort of a uh, performance with Ethereum two or ETH two, but that's going to take um, a while longer. Um, so Rainbow Bridge at the moment is purely a a ETH a ETH Nia bridge. Um, so it's not, not any other blockchains. Um, Near is uh, ETH compatible, so it uses the same EVM, the same Ethereum virtual machine. So that's why you can you can do these things um, fairly easily. Now we can see um, so Near as a blockchain has basically one to two second transaction speeds. So that's compared to you know, anything up to fifteen seconds for Ethereum. Uh, low transaction fees usually under a cent. So currently, probably the cheapest transaction fee on Ethereum probably about ten ten dollars just for doing a transfer. Um, and uh, obviously doing the bridging stuff on Ethereum on, on, on Nier is, uh, is much cheaper as well. Um, I, I mean, I guess the disadvantages we'll get into it a little bit is, is that there's, there's not an awful lot of uh, dApps running on Nier at the moment. It's a fairly new blockchain. Ethereum's been around for a number of years, so there's a whole bunch of, of kind of you know, well-understood dApps running on Ethereum. Uh, on Nier, it's just sort of starting up, so that's kind of, I, I guess, this is sort of a balance um, kind of scenario. Um, there's a nice thing here that if you don't already have a Nia account, which probably many people won't have, um, you can easily onboard to Nia using this ETH faucet. So there's a, a, a DAP called Paris um, that runs on Nia, and if you can use your MetaMask account, and basically um, that will you log into MetaMask, and if you have a, a balance higher than it's about 100, was about 150 ETH, 150 dollars of ETH, um, you can you can create your Nia account and start using the Rainbow Bridge straight away. So. That's um, if you haven't already created a, a near account. There are there are pretty straightforward ways of creating near wallets. It's not it's not all that difficult actually. You don't need to use I, MetaMask. I'm, really I don't, I'm not using MetaMask. So um, what's on near at the moment? So we have some stable coins. We have these sort of wrapped assets. So we have wrapped Bitcoin and wrapped ETH. We have uh, uh, Dex tokens, uh, Uni and One Inch, uh, lending tokens like Arbe and Comp, um, and some other sort of uh, cryptocurrencies. So um, I'm going to go through all this sort of detail. Um, just This is just a bit of a kind of technical aspect of how the sort of bridge works. Um, one thing to be aware of, though, is um, the bridging is, 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 um, is, does sort of take time. <laughs> so sending assets from Ethereum to Nier takes six minutes, um, which is 20 blocks. 
and costs about $10 for an ERC20 uh, token. So going from Ethereum to NIA, uh, that, that's how long it takes. Um, sending from NIA back to Ethereum is, is, uh, is, is uh, a, lot more, <laughs> a lot more of a hassle. So 16 hours. So basically, I guess you're, wait, you're waiting because you're waiting uh, for the for the 20 blocks of Ethereum. Um, I, I guess they, it's, it's probably, probably more than 20 blocks to get that finality, um, and also costs about $60. So basically, when you're taking your Ethereum and putting it onto Nia, um, they're they're saying it's going to be sort of much cheaper and quicker. Sending it back the other way is a bit of a hassle. I guess probably most people won't be interested in sending it back at least for the time being. So. To just kind of bear, uh, just to bear that uh, in mind. Also, um, I did also say that the, the uh, uh, Nia uses this EVM, uh, the Ethereum virtual machine. That's not actually launched yet. Okay, so so the, so the bridging software is 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 you know separate from that. Um, uh, but this is on the on the interoperability roadmap, so it is coming at some point. So again, this is um, pretty uh, new. So just be you know, be very careful if you are going to use it. Um, uh, probably better probably at the moment to sort of wait until a bit more time has, has, has gone through, but it is interesting to see this stuff happening. Anyway, let's uh, stop talking. Let's go and have a look at the least and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is what the actual kind of interface looks like. Um, so uh, also note here that you can't use near wallets that are secured by Ledger or two-factor authentication, um, but this is basically what, what sort of happens. So um, obviously you can switch between the two, um, so I can connect to my uh, MetaMask address. Um, so it's just like a test address here. So that's connected. And I can connect to my NIA account. So um, I don't have to create one. If you want to create one, you basically go to this faucet account. Uh, but I've actually got a NIA wallet. So it's going to go and um, you know, I need to obviously check that that's going to go through. So now um, these two are connected. Um, so to begin a transfer, I'd have to select. I've not really got a lot in this wallet, so um, I actually look like I've got any tokens um, that would uh, that are supported on the near on the near side. Um, but if I did, I could obviously uh, I could obviously select them, um, and then uh, you have to would go through the various stages. So I'd have to approve the transfer, so that would be an Ethereum um, uh, kind of uh, gas fee transaction. Um, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any of the things. It's probably worth having a quick look. So, so this is the this is the list of the tokens that are supported. Um, so it's not a very large list, really. Um, I guess they are the more some of the more well known ones in terms of being a lot of the DeFi tokens. So Comp, uh, Synthetic, Sushi, uh, stable coins like Dai, um, Aave, uh, Rat Bitcoin. A few of the stable coins link uh, the Oracle um, token. So. Um, so I guess those are the kind of sort of well-known ones. Um, uh, in terms of going back the other way, obviously you would just go back the other way. Um, and the only tokens, so these are the tokens that you would transfer back from the, from Nia onto uh, to get their Ethereum versions. You can see all the Nia, all the tokens running on Nia have this N because they're the Nia version. So you have the Nia version of of uh, Tether, the near version of Uni, the near version of Link. Because basically what you're doing is you're taking those tokens, you're burning them and reissuing them on the other side. So um, that's that's kind of how that process works. Obviously, I've not got any of those other tokens on my in my near wallet, um, so so that's not <laughs> going to work either. But that gives you a, a kind of rough idea of, of uh, how the process would work if you did want to do that. So as we're here, let's just have a quick look at uh, some of the dApps on near. So this is the uh, Paras. Uh, kind of a NF, sort of an NFT marketplace. They don't call it NFT; they call it digital art cards. Um, so um, we can just have a quick look and uh, see what's going on there. So obviously NFTs are a big thing um, on, on certainly on Ethereum and every blockchain. So we're starting to see now um, similar sort of things. So this is just one of the marketplaces. Um, I guess one of the better known ones. Um, so we can see these are all priced in Nia in the Nia token. So obviously as, as ETH. Is the uh, native token on Ethereum? Near is the native token on, on the Near blockchain. So <laughs> some of these are selling, uh, or the price at least is set at 200 N, 200 Near. So that's $1,234 at the moment. There's this crazy fish set at 215. So, um, you know, <laughs> the prices are already uh, fairly uh, expensive. What we've got here looks like some uh, Star Wars stuff going on, or meme stuff. <laughs> so, um, Click on something, uh, we can kind of see um, this is the addition of two. I see the details here actually. 
there we go. Uh, we have a bit more information. Uh, you can see how many how many of them there are. That's typically you see on a marketplace. Um, this is the person who's created them, and uh, we have a look at the history for related. Oh, there we go. So you can see um, that's not been bought. It's been put for sale for a while. Um, similarly, this sort of sort of stuff. Uh, there's only one of these. That's so a you know a one-off um, art piece. Uh, so that's the uh, a look at the NFT um, marketplace going on. Um, we also have a look at uh, one other DAP. So this is one of uh, the best known uh, DAPs on Nier at the moment. It's called Pulse. It's a, um, a kind of a prediction market sort of thing. So we've seen quite a lot of these um, starting off with Arga on Ethereum. And basically, you, it's basically sort of a, a prediction market where you where you bet to think what's going to happen. So they're asking, will the price of Nier be over $6.50 um, on the uh, 9th of April? Um, and the market uh, thinks no, pretty much. But obviously, if we wanted to, we have to look at the login. Um, so just log in through our wallet, just like we would sort of log in using using MetaMask. But this is just the uh, near wallet. Okay, I've not been. This is on beta at the moment, so, so I can't actually um, I can't actually bet on this because I'm not whitelisted. Uh, but you can obviously see um, over time how the how the uh, people have been have been pretty positive back in the day, and now suddenly people are suddenly. <laughs> Suddenly, we've got got a lot more uh, negative. And if you, if you wanted to, we could obviously we could obviously uh, choose whether we think yes or no. We could place um, spend tokens um, to back up that bet. And obviously, if if it would be proved um, correct, uh, so the resolution date, yeah, 9th of April. Um, so depending on how you how you place your value, how you make that bet, you would either obviously win or lose um, extra, or you would obviously win win some or lose it all um, on on the, re on the resolution date. So um, similar things. There's not a vast amount going on here yet. As I say, things on Nier are pretty uh, pretty early days for DApps on Nier, but we can see here, you know, similar sort of things. So will the price of ETH be over uh, 2,100? People are thinking uh, pretty much no at the moment. Um, we can see this is the total volume. So this is how much um, of the, this is this wrapped Nier token. So a bit like wrapped ETH is used um, uh, as, as, as the currency on Ethereum. We have wrapped Nier tokens here. We can just see the volume. Uh, Things about uh, the Berlin hard fork for Ethereum. I guess it's for Ethereum. I think it's Ethereum. Um, so more about the price of Nia. Will there be an exploit? What will be co co excuse me, Coinbase's market cap? Um, current estimate is that's going to be uh, 118 billion. Is that right? Uh, do the maths. Yeah, 118 billion dollars. Um, so anyway, so you get an idea of, of sort of the DApps. The DApps are sort of roughly the same as we see on most other blockchains. Obviously, kind of different implementation. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what's going on with Nia. And uh, I guess now this bridge is live, we're going to start to see um, developers probably building a bit more, certainly on the DeFi side, as these tokens start to get minted onto the Nia blockchain. Then we'll start to see um, some of those uh, kind of yield farming and, and all the sorts of uh, DEXs and all the sorts of things we've seen on Ethereum, the savings and loans uh, thing, all, all, all kind of kicking off on Nia in, in the near future, I guess. Um, thanks for watching. This is uh, Dap Radar. We spend our time looking at the world of smart contracts and dApps and blockchains and, and seeing how it's all kind of playing out or trying to make sense of it. Um, definitely think blockchains like Near and Harmony and Solana and Binance Smart Chain are kind of where a lot of the activity is currently happening. Um, so keeping an eye on those in particular. But thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel and see you again soon.